Um, so what I, you know, I ask uh, Lauren to kind of throw that those polling questions out so that we can kind of get a feel of uh, kind of where you're at with different things uh, technology wise, uh, what you know what you've seen um, before, if you've looked at Intact before, if you've uh, uh, need to see anything specific in this presentation. So again, we're going to be pretty high level for the most part. Um, quick agenda here, just hey, just give you a little history about Action Associates and a little bit of history about Sage uh, and Sage's construction software, uh, a quick status of Intact for construction, um, and then we're going to go right into the demonstration. Um, so just a real quick, you know, those of you who may not know about Action Associates, we've been around uh, since 1979, uh, been in the construction space ever since that time. I joined back in 2003. Um, so. We've been doing this a long time. We've got people that are extremely well uh, experienced in the construction space, construction software space. Um, we have several divisions in our organizations besides just uh, construction. We do supply chain, uh, multi-industry, and then, of course, we've got a full technology department uh, that's manned with network engineers and software engineers, and um, we have two data centers uh, so we actually provide private cloud hosting for a lot of our sage customers and uh, um, that's kind of what uh, you know a real brief foot footprint of what we look at look like um, we have presences uh, for you know quite a bit of space here particularly here in the east coast and midwest um, but we have we have a national footprint our construction division focuses on sage products <clears throat> that's our, our primary product. Uh, there's three Sage products in the accounting space, the Sage 100 contractor, formerly known as Master Builder. A lot of you guys know familiar with that. Sage 300 construction real estate. I will mess up because that's my roots, and I will call it Timberline um, because that's what it was formerly known as. Uh, we're going to talk about Sage Intact for construction, and, of course, we've got Sage Estimating, uh, which is one of the industry leaders for you know, estimating takeoff tools, et cetera. Um, and then there's a whole variety of independent software vendors that connect in with Sage and provide you know, specific solutions uh, for uh, an individual company's needs. So lots of different things you can do. Um, so anyway, uh, just the history. Like I said, a Sage, uh, history of Sage's space and construction. Uh, Timberline, you know, yeah, that's where I've got my start when the Timberline was around. Uh, a few years, a oh, couple of, over a decade or more ago, Sage uh, acquired Timberline and rebranded it and called it Sage 300 Construction and Real Estate. Um, about that same time, um, they did acquire Master Builder from Intuit, um, and the goal was just to you know continue to build out their construction vertical um, product suite. Um, about 10 years ago, or maybe a little bit less, um, Intact. Uh, arrived on the scene, and a few years after that, um, Sage had acquired Intact, I want to say about three or four years ago, um, so it became part of the Sage family. Um, Intact particularly is uh, a, a pure cloud suite of uh, uh, products. Initially, it was started off as a primarily an accounting, a horizontal accounting product. Um, since its inception, that has built out lots of vertical uh, components to their product. And about two years ago, a little bit more, give or take, uh, Sage started uh, developing the vertical construction uh, initiative within Intact, taking all the experience and knowledge that they've had over the years uh, in the construction space and applying that to the Intact platform. Uh, Intact is you know, known as uh, endorsed by the AICPA and it's very, you know, got a lot of awards, and it's very, uh, it's one of the most powerful accounting platforms I've seen uh, in a long, long time. So, anyway, just a little bit of background there. Um, what the construction map kind of looks like in the world is um, you see these different layers horizontally are kind of the, the layers of intact, if you will, starting at the bottom up. You got your infrastructure, the foundation. Um, of the code, and then right in the middle in that yellow box is the core accounting components, um, which comes with just about everything. Um, and then at the top, 
there are some additional modules and components that can be added as a particular company needs. And at the very top, you see kind of where they've built out their various uh, industry verticals. So what I've done is highlighted in yellow and green, and yellow boxes with green text, uh, the components that are included in the construction uh, mo uh, suite, if you will. Uh, sales orders, basically, we, we don't call them sales orders in construction. We call it revenue and billing and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of what that is, is how to track your contracts. Um, projects, that module existed, um, and it was just basically um, modified to adapt for the construction and construction breakdown that we use. Um, time and expense, pretty obvious. Uh, time sheets and expense reports. Inventory. Spend management is in tax word of basically tracking um, commitments within construction. That's what we typically would call spend management, how to make sure you don't overspend a commitment, how to manage those kinds of types of things. Purchasing, same thing, managing purchasing. So you can see it wasn't necessarily created from scratch. It started with a really solid platform, and then we just took what we know or what Sage knows over the years about construction and just kind of built those into th these existing modules, which is kind of part of the reason um, they were able to bring it to market fairly quick. Um, still work to do, never uh, never done. It's like uh, remodeling your house. The uh, longer you live there, the more projects you have to do. <laughs> so it's kind of the same thing in software. There's always stuff to do in software. There's always improvements. Uh, a lot of factors come into that from just functionality changes in uh, uh, demands and things like that. So anyway, it just real quick, let me zip through these, build this out real quick so we can kind of move on uh, real quick. So uh, Intact is very structured, very dependable about how they do releases. Uh, they do four a year. Um, so, and they do it the second month of the quarter, uh, pretty consistently. Um, so we had a release one that came out in February, release two came out in May. Um, some things that got changed or up included in those releases in May, there's you know change orders. Uh, I call them upstream, basically uh, contract change orders. Some enhancements came in for project change requests. Um, there's still some more work to kind of build that out the way they want it. Um, the August and November releases will, be, will comprise of you know, some additional change request functionality, um, enhanced billing, basically taking the AIA type of billing to the next level. You know, subcontractor compliance, um, that's a little bit of a gap right now, but that's quickly going to be filled here later this year. Um, and then a payroll solution will be out. So just to give you an idea what's uh, coming down the road. And uh, again, these things can happen pretty quick. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the ISVs or independent software vendors, third parties, whatever you might call them, there's dozens and dozens of them. Uh, there's actually hundreds of them when you go look at that list at uh, Interact with Intact. Kind of the strategic ones right now in the construction space, um, Hyphen, Procore, Core Associates, Paperlist, et cetera, as you can see these on the screen. Um, those are kind of the ones that most construction companies are interested in. Uh, so those were the first ones that are being rolled out. Of course, Paperless and Core Associates handle imaging. Sage Service Operations are for service management, you know, mobile work orders, et cetera. Um, tool Ops for small tool inventory management, Procore for your uh, large job project management. So anyway, um, those are some things that happen. So um, without any ado, we'll go ahead and hand this over to Kathy. Let her you know, crack open the software. Uh, Take a look at that. What uh, I'd like for you guys to do is to kind of, you know, in either the chat or the Q&A section, um, hey, put questions or desires or in, uh, things that you want to see, um, and uh, we'll address them. So, Kathy, I'm going to turn it over to you. All right. Great. Thanks, Steve. Can you see my screen okay? First things first. Yes, we can. All right. Perfect. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as Steve mentioned, I'm Kathy Sherman. I am one of the sales engineers here at Action Associates. And I'm gonna walk you through a high-level overview of Sage Intact Construction. 
Very excited to be here today. It's an exciting product. Um, as you'll see, hopefully, as I go through the screens, um, what my excitement is all about. Uh, so I'm going to dive right in. Uh, you should be seeing my dashboard. Uh, first things first, this is a web-based program, as Steve mentioned earlier. So I'm on uh, Chrome. Google Chrome is my browser here today. So you can access this with any browser. It's browser agnostic. So if you're, if you're a Firefox user or wherever, uh, whatever product edge you might be using, uh, all of those are going to get you to the same place. And the beauty of having a total cloud system is you can get to this anywhere at any time with your browser. So makes it a very, very powerful tool, especially uh, during pandemic times where people might be, you know, hesitant to go to the office or whatever, uh, you know, you're able to always access your information. So you are looking at my dashboard. Uh, our dashboards are role-based, so I have mine set to a project performance dashboard. And there's full, full security built around the whole system. If we have time, I can dive into showing you how detailed it is, but know that if you want to restrict who has a specific type of dashboard and set up roles within your company, that's probably um, the way we would recommend. Uh, and then full security as to can someone modify a dashboard? Can someone uh, add a part? Can they delete a part? You know, you're really in control of all of that type of functionality. Uh, you're also in control of who sees what modules. So I'm an admin user. So if I come to where it says dashboard in this navy bar here, and I click the down arrow, you can see all the modules that I'm able to get to. Basically, I'm an admin user. I can get to all of these modules. If I had a restricted user, maybe I had somebody uh, such as Jan over here. I have another tab open with Jan logged in. Jan does not have the full capability. So Jan's not going to be able to see all that my admin user can see. She's going to be restricted to only seeing the modules and only getting to what she has security to um, be able to see. So keep that in mind. I know that's a question I always get. Can they even see the other items on the menu? The answer is no. They would only see what the security enables them to see. So all of that's controlled. Uh, the next thing I want to point out right at the very top where it says top level, um, I am at the top level, so think of that as the rolled up entity. But my entity here that I'm in today is a multi-entity environment. So if I click my down arrow, you can see I have different companies within this, uh, this setup here for my uh, sales demo company. So if I have, uh, maybe I want to go to my residential entity. All I would have to do is click into that. It's going to open up that residential entity tab, and I have mine color-coded, so my residential is this reddish color, an indicator of what entity I'm in. And now this dashboard, this project performance dashboard that I'm on, is only, oh, I just clicked out of it, is only related to my Timberline residential information. So it's always going to restrict you to um, the data of the entity you're in. If I click to the third tab, this is my, and, I, and I'm laughing at the titles that say Jews. Tim, uh, Steve said uh, he was stuck saying Timberline. Well, Sage created a, a Timberline general construction company, so they too uh, like to stick with that Timberline verbiage. So I'm uh, just kind of chuckling as you said that earlier. Uh, so the, the point here is that you're able to open these different tabs for your different entities, and you would be able to work within those different entities. You don't have to you know, close one or, or, or log out of one to get to the other. You're able to have these tabs open and toggle between them to do your, your work accordingly. Uh, once again, security provided that you have that, the access to those. Um, so that kind of covers the multi-entity, how that would look, how you can navigate around that. Uh, one of the other I'd say differentiators uh, with Sage Intact are what the, they term dimensions. So you have the ability, you have set dimensions. I think, I think the, the term, the number is nine dimensions when you, we, when you purchase Sage Intact. You have nine dimensions, 
And think of those as ways to tag your data. So I'm sure most of, of you on here are used to seeing how you can, you know, maybe tag different data with your transactions. And then when you go to report, you can report on those different tags, in this case, uh, i.e. dimensions. So up at the top, I have a couple drop downs. One is the date. So I'm able to um, navigate to the date that I want my dashboard to be as of. I can set it to default to today's date. I can, I can change it back two years ago if I need to look something up and see how something was a couple years ago. So I'm always able to navigate with the date. But I'm also able to use these dimensions. So this is the company, or I can have different locations here. And the next one over is job types. Maybe I only want to see my hotel group, for example. I can click hotel group. I can apply. And what it's going to do is it's going to narrow down uh, the data to only the hotel group that I have specified. So now I'm looking at only jobs that I've classified as hotels. I could further narrow it down if, let's say, I only wanted to look at my, my hotel jobs that apply to Bill Ricky, my customer. I can click that and I can click apply to that. So giving you this ability, this dynamic ability to change those results and see, you know, maybe you're, you're just talking to somebody and you're, you're trying to compare something and, and you want to do it on the fly. Think of these dimensions and these dashboards as a way to be able to do that. They become very powerful um, as a way to get that, you know, up to the minute type reporting. And once again, I'm at the top level, but I could have been doing this in any of my other entities there as well. I'm going to go ahead and clear that. And now I'm going to come back to my dashboard for today. And as I've been toggling, you've probably been noticing these different components on my dashboard. So up at the top, I have what Intac calls performance cards. So these are more, uh, you know, little KPIs that you might want to set up on your dashboard, um, various uh, formats here. But provided the security, it's very easy to add one of these KPI cards. So I have, uh, I have the authority, so I'm going to go ahead and click the plus sign just to give you an example of, of what this might look like. The first thing you're going to do is pick your component type. So I'm going to pick mine. I could pick a report. I, I could pick a chart. I could pick, maybe I just want to look at some accounts payable records. But I'm going to pick performance card in this example here. Um, I'm going to say my title is going to be, um, let's say, demo, demo KPI. I can change the demo type, demo KPI. Account group, you'll see right below that. Um, I'm going to use active job count, but you have the ability to create account groups. These are, think of account groups in this system as the building blocks of reporting. So, um, this is something that we created for this environment. And how do I want to compare my job count? I'm going to do it to prior period. What do I want my icons to look like? Oh, I'll, I'll pick a flag. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. So now what it's go going to do is taking that information and it's pulling this job count KPI, my demo KPI here onto the screen. Well, that looks like a dollar. It doesn't look like a, a number, so I'm going to go ahead and modify this really quick. I must have picked currency. I did. I'm going to go ahead and change that to number and change that to um, do that. So that's how um, quick that works, just to give you an idea of how you can um, create these, these KPIs. You don't need a, a programming uh, degree to be able to do that. Um, it's literally once permissions and understanding the building blocks of the program and being able to add those to your dashboard. So there's my flag. I picked my lovely green flag. And some of those are performance cards. Uh, right below that, you'll see I have some more, I'm going to say more traditional reporting. I have project profitability. So here I have my, my profit margin. Um, by my jobs up at the top. You are able to create these so you can drill down into them. So if I wanted to drill down into my cost of sales material for my La Cuenta Houston job, I'm going to go ahead and do that. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this AP invoice. Let me go ahead and click into that. And I'm going to expand the screen so you can take a look at the screen. So right now I'm in the Acme Door and Glass Accounts Payable Invoice for $24.99. As I scroll down, you can see the AP entry screen where I'm, I'm coding it to account, uh, location, and then I'm tagging it. What's my job? Do I want to have the customer tag there as well? My vendor's going to come down. Maybe for some reason I want to tag this to an employee or an item, cost code, cost type. So bringing in those dimensions, if you're, if you're down the road going to want to um, run some of your reporting by a given dimension, for example. So going back to that tagging and then the power of what Intact offers there. In the middle, if you have uh, or the need to attach an invoice copy, you can do that. I'm going to click on my paperclip. I'm going to bring up my invoice copy here. So you have the ability to add those invoice copies. You can either browse out for them if you have those scanned in your system, or if you have it, maybe you have a, let's say, an email, a general email box. AP at whatevercompany.com and their attachments, you can drag and drop them onto the screen and attach them that way as well. So you're going to have those two options. We do have, um, as Steve mentioned, those ISV partners. If you wanted to um, maybe use uh, the TimberScan type product, if you're using that today and have the OCR capabilities, uh, that exists as well. So um, just know if you're using that today, it would um, move over to the product that's made very similar to that, but for um, intact. So that functionality does exist. And as I scroll down, I want to call your attention to the lower left-hand corner. You see I have some messaging going on. So this is called Collaborate. Um, it's a fantastic uh, feature that is built within Sage Intact and you have the ability, think of it as uh, maybe the teams within your uh, program. So you can create groups, you know, chat groups or, or similar to a Teams group. You can ask questions about a transaction. Someone else can get a notification uh, that you've asked them. So in this case, I asked Emma to double check this invoice. Um, Emma responded, yep, it's agreed upon. You can attach files to your messaging if you need to. Um, so it's a great, uh, you know, functionality that's built into the program, and this information doesn't go away. So a year from now, if you wanted to, you can't remember, you know, what Emma said about this particular invoice or what a PM said about uh, some transaction, you're going to have this trail. You're going to be able to go back to it, and you're going to be able to have that information, you know, at your fingertips. So this is called Collaborate, very powerful uh, tool. Also might be able to help you at audit time, you know, answer your auditor type questions. If you need to go back to something, uh, you would have that, that trail. There is also up at the right-hand corner, a bubble, conversation bubble, and this can take me to my collaboration center. So there's an actual collaboration center here where you can have all of your feed, what you're following, and your groups and you can come here and see all of that information. All right, let me go back to um, my project performance dashboard. And coming back here, so I was drilling down into that cost of, uh, cost of sales material. I'm going to scroll down. I have some other dash parts. And you're, you're controlling, once again, you're controlling what dash parts, what information you want to see real time here on your dashboard. So, you know, you want to have your project overview with your costs and be able to, <clears throat> excuse me, drill down into these costs and see, you know, by, by account what's making up these, these costs. You would be able to do that. Scrolling a little bit farther, project profitability by month customer profitability, you know, being able to create different types of <clears throat> dimensional relationships, you know, maybe that's important. Uh, going a little bit farther, you can see I have some charts and graphs. 
so I'm able to hear, look at estimate versus actual. Maybe you're that visual person who likes to see, you know, the color combination and how we're doing there. Uh, when you create these charts, you're always able to uh, toggle between the data that makes up the, the chart or graph and toggle between the two. So that's nice to be able to see, you know, I see the root information there. Uh, you can also do conditional highlighting um, within, your, uh, within your reporting as well. If you wanted to band out, you know, labor or something like that, uh, you would be able to do that as evidenced by um, my blue bands there on the left. Going through, I'm not an approver, uh, or I don't have anything set to approve here, but if I did, I can have an icon for AP uh, invoices to approve. Uh, and then you can also bring in different features. So I have my highlighting here and highlights of intact in my dashboard. But I wanna get to a little bit lower, <clears throat> excuse me, where I'm getting to, um, Cost overview. So what I'm about to go into now is called our one of our interactive reports. So I'm going to expand this and make this one a little bit bigger. So think of uh, just like the title sounds, interactive report. You can modify this report on the screen, uh, which makes it interactive instead of just a you know static type of report. I can pick my job from my drop down here. Um, I can determine what I want to see at this moment. Maybe I, I don't really need to see all of this specific cost code information. So I can right click and I can exclude that column. So now I'm looking at my divisions, my types. Well, maybe I don't really want to see my divisions. I'm gonna go ahead and exclude that. And now I'm looking at cost types. I'm looking at my original estimate, my changes, my committed, budget to actual, going back to that conditional, you know, if something's over budget, I want it to stand out. So I'm able to really modify this and add and, add and delete and sort um, right here on the screen. So this becomes a very powerful report. Now I, let's say I wanna bring back in, um, oh, I'm gonna bring back in my divisions. Um, or I want to, um, I can move columns as well. So if I want to move that back over there. I can do that. So I think you get the idea, um, interactive being just that, but it really becomes a very powerful way to analyze data and, and being able to see, you know, summary, detail, what do I want to get to, um, what columns do I want to add or subtract or sort by. And this can always be emailed. There's a button up at the top, which you see that email. Um, if you're in a report and you're creating a report, this is how you would, there's always gonna be a button to add it to your dashboard. And down at the bottom, export. So you can always export to PDF, Excel, CSV, you can see that um, XML and the different formats there. And this is our interactive report. So you're gonna have KPIs, you're gonna have standard financial reports, you're going to have custom reports, and then this would be the final, uh, the interactive report type what comprises all of the different reporting types, making this a very powerful, that as Steve alluded to, that very powerful AICPA approved financial package. All right, so don't wanna make anyone dizzy. Uh, going back up at the top here. One thing that was recently added um, is this end of the month type of dashboard. So they created, uh, this was what customers had asked for, and so they created this uh, type of end of the month uh, information. So if you wanted to track, you know, uh, what subledgers are closed for your entities and, and what they're closed, you know, what the time frame they're closed through, that might be important to you if you're multi-entity and, and you have, um, you know, tracking that for month end close. Or maybe you want to create a, a working checklist of what's going on, uh, who owns the checklist and who's doing what. You can then, if I scroll down a little bit, have working assignments here and, and start, start dates and due dates and, and be able to assign those to different employees. So um, once again, just giving you uh, some greater visibility to your month-end procedures, uh, 
I brought in here Actions website, but if you have different websites you want to bring in, URLs you want to bring into uh, your dashboard, you can do that as well. And then I have a list of some AP invoices here. If I was a prover, an approver, I might, uh, I might want that sitting on my dashboard. Uh, but really, it's what's important to you and, and, and what data do you want to see on a, a day in and day out basis. I opened up another, I have another entity here. It's um, my entity called GBD. And I opened up this one because uh, this is interesting, again, if you're multi-entity. Um, I know some of you might not be, but for those of you that are, having these dash parts that make sure you're always in balance, you know, having that, uh, making sure the end result is zero and all your do to do froms are, are zeroing out. Uh, maybe keeping different ledgers, different trial balances on board. Um, once again, just making sure everything is good to go with your um, month end closing and your, your reconciliation. All right, I'm gonna come back here to my, um, my main entity here. And I clicked this house, this is my home button. So now I'm sitting at the home screen for my entity, and the first thing you're going to see is Intact product update. So as Steve mentioned, uh, Intact does these quarterly. They're very, um, very visible as to the release dates and what that calendar looks like. So the next one's coming out in August, uh, August 20th is the date of that. Uh, they're all, always going to give you the enhancements ahead of time. So if you want to see, you know, what's coming out and, and maybe, uh, you know, look at uh, how that's going to enhance your procedures, uh, you would be able to see that in advance. What I really like as I've been working with this product are these release highlights. So they do this, I click into this, I don't want to have her talk, but you're able to um, have Julie, she always goes through all the different highlights of the different areas. Uh, you can see here as I scroll down, all of those gives you the visual. And then the, the different product managers for the different areas will then take it a step further and go through, uh, like for example, for change, change orders, anything they change on change orders. The product manager for construction comes on and will do a recording of how that exactly uh, you know, impacts the, the jobs and what the enhancement is for change orders. So I think it's a, a great tool to be able to come in here, have that right in front of you, come to these release notes, and then have these sub videos that you can come and watch by area. I think that's a, um, a really nice feature here. All right. And something, you know, you don't get it the first time, you can come back and watch it a couple times and, and then it will, uh, you know, gradually sink in and, and be there for you. So. A uh, couple other things that I think are important um, as you look at Intact, I'm going to come to the company screen and, and set up, I'm going to come to import data because I think the visual here is pretty powerful. As I scroll down, and I don't want to make anyone dizzy, you can see all of the ways to import data. So they're going to give you a template by area, they're going to give you an ability to import data. And this isn't the only place in the program to import. There are ways to enter um, estimates on the job screen within the job, so um, keep that in mind. But you can also do it here. But it, uh, like I said, gives you that format, it gives you the ability to import by area, all of um, that different information. The other thing while I'm here is the inter-entity mapping. So all of the do to do froms you set up if you're multi entity uh, you can have all of your mapping so if I'm in my development company and I'm doing an interaction with uh, my Timberline GC company what receivable and payable accounts do you want that transaction to hit on each entity so it's a very straightforward mapping where you tell the system when I do one side of the entry I want you to follow these general ledger accounts to do the flip side. So you don't have to open up that other entity, you don't have to do the flip side. The um, system is going to be able to do that for you, okay? Um, so that's always good to, I think, give you the visual of, of how, that, um, how that occurs. 
and I'll hopefully get to a transaction here in a bit. Um, in terms of the accounts payable screen, I'm gonna come into here, I'm gonna pretend I'm adding something. <clears throat> so this is the AP entry screen. Uh, let's say I'm, I'm gonna enter something for this vendor, put in my invoice number. Once again, here's that attachment screen. I scroll down here, my, my terms are gonna default from my vendor default. And then a little bit below, we had the grid we talked about here. Um, but let's say maybe you wanted another dimension added to your, your line item here. And you, you, didn't, you wanted to add, um, I don't know, maybe employees. We, I know that's one of our dimensions. So I could come to more actions. I can say I wanna edit this entry layout. So now, a pr provided I have the rights, once again, the security rights to do that, it now opens up the entry screen and gives me those other dimensions. So here's my employee dimension. So what I can do is I can grab that, I can bring it up here. Let's say I want it to go to the left of memo. Now it's up there and I say, save my layout. So now when somebody comes to enter an accounts payable invoice, not only do they have the job, the cost code, the cost type, the location, but now we have that additional employee and now the memo field. So it's that easy uh, with security to come up here, you know, maybe you want the, um, the different columns to be in different orders, no problem. You know, the person with the rights can go ahead and modify this so that it's the easiest flow for your team and that you're capturing the, the right amount of information. So pretty neat, pretty neat functionality, you know, in this, uh, with this web-based tool to be able to kind of do a little mini design within, uh, within the program here. What you can also do is when I'm on a given screen, uh, such as this screen, I'm on uh, an invoice listing screen, I can always, uh, you know, maybe I want to look at just posted invoices, for example. I can just put posted here in the, in the status type column and now I'm looking at posted. So you're always able to narrow it down by these, um, these columns here. You wanna be searching for something or searching for a particular vendor, but you can also set up views. And this is not only on the accounts payable screen, but this is on all of the screens. So if you wanted to create a new view, maybe you're used to you know, looking for certain information or you, know, you want your information structured on a screen in a view that you're always looking at. You would pick your columns in step one, you would come to step two and select your sequence of columns. You know, how do you want that? How do you want that to work? Do you want this to come before that? And you just drag and drop these to the order that you want to see that, that sequence. You can set up your specific filters. So if you wanted to, maybe you're always modifying one vendor or maybe you're modifying invoices over $10,000 or you know, whatever that filter might be. And then how do you want that to sort? And then you create your view. So all the screens are gonna have these, uh, these view creations, not just accounts payable, but that gives you kind of behind the scenes of where you can do a report, a little mini report, so to speak, uh, right on this screen as well. Um, now I'm going to hop, hop over to, I can see I'm kind of running out of time, which always happens, and I knew that would happen. Um, a couple other things, I'm going to go into the job screen. Actually, I'm going to go into my GC job screen. And I'm going to go ahead and take a peek at some jobs, or a job. So here I have my jobs. I'm going to go ahead and edit this one. And now across the top you see applicable um, information to get to different tabs. So on the very top, your type, your description, your start and end date, right under that, your parent job. So is this job related to a parent? Are we going to invoice this with a parent? That type of information uh, is done on the screen. Our job status, you know, did we want to tag our, our PM or any other information here up at the top? Um, Additional information, just that. Uh, on the right here, I was, I was, um, I had a client, a container client is actually what they were, uh, and they wanted to see me add custom fields. So I added some container columns here. Uh, you can add it to where 
where it says 20 foot container, you can just populate or you can have um, you know, multiple choice or where you have this selection where you know, I, wanna, I wanna pick my type of container and do it that way. So if you need to add uh, or, or track some type of custom fields, custom information, uh, we can do that. We can say yes, track it on the job, put it in the in additional information tab, and then we can build these out uh, with the particular custom uh, you know, specifications or what you want to track. Um, how are we uh, how are we running invoicing? Do we want to do an invoice as of a specific date or when something's you know X percent complete? If you have those more of a milestone type of invoicing, uh, that's where we can drive that. Uh, billing, what type of billing are we doing on this invoice? Um, and if you need to track other type of um, client number documents, we can do that in that area down below there. Resource and pricing, um, if you don't have to use this, but if you want, if you want to um, do sort of resource planning where you're, you know, at this, uh, if you want to search for an employee who has a specific skill and they're tagged with a specific skill, maybe you're looking for somebody who does, you know, concrete and you want to search your, your employees for concrete and you want to assign them to this job. You know, you can definitely do that with this resource search area. We can then have the ability, um, if you need to create Gantt charts, we can do that as well. Scheduling. Uh, job summaries, just, just as the title alludes, uh, summary information on this job, um, whether it's hours, whether it's employee expense. Um, and once again, all of this can be built into those dash parts. Invoice options. How are we going to invoice? Do we want warnings, that type of information? And cost codes. Here are our cost codes on this particular project. We can always add uh, after our initial. We can have our planned beginning, end dates, um, and all of that signed here. And then those are what are going to flow into our estimates. So on our estimates, these can be imported you can have as many estimates or estimate types as you want. Um, the one that's going to flow through to particular reporting would be the one that's gonna be checked primary, um, just as a little hint there. Uh, and then if I click the pencil, I can see the detail behind that estimate with all of my you know, more specific data with my cost codes, amounts and such. Uh, with change estimates, uh, if you have change requests, right under that is where you're going to see uh, the change information, the change request, the, the commitment or whatever it's tied to, and the amount of the change request is going to be here in that area right below there. <clears throat> and then other job information you might be tracking here um, and, and different, uh, different components there a little bit a look around the particular job screen. Um, in terms of uh, changes, you know, you also have change management here where you can have different types of coming back to those views. You know, do you want to have um, submitted, do you want to see your submitted changes? Do you want to see, you know, what kind of statuses do you want to narrow down your data by? Uh, and you can have as many different statuses as you want. Uh, the neat thing about Intact is when you create these statuses, you're basically telling the system what you want it to do with that status. So for example, let's say verbal for your company means you actually think of verbal in this as approved. Maybe you want that to be posted. Some companies might want that. Some might want the ability to make a verbal um, an actual approved one. And they want to delineate between what's approved and what's still a verbal but approved. But maybe some other company says, well, no, I don't, it's just a verbal, I, I, I don't want that posted yet, I, I still want that pending. You know, I still want that as a, a pending change order. So you, you have the ability to create these different statuses and to tell the system what you want to do with that status. So it becomes very powerful um, being able to create some different definitions. So do you have to do that? No, you, no, you don't. But it gives the option 
of being able to, um, to do that. All right, so one other thing, I know I am basically out of time. I'm gonna keep talking though. <laughs> I, have, I have more to show. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I, I like the journal entry. I like showing the, um, the intercompany journal entry. I think it's pretty powerful showing how that works. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a journal entry. I'm just gonna say, my demo journal entry. Now this has to be, I just caught myself, this one has to be at the top level because I am doing uh, intercompany journal entry. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch and come to my top level and say add. And here I'm gonna say demo journal entry. I'm picking my source entity. That's gonna be my account construction. And then down here, let's just say account, uh, I don't know, is there accounting fees or rent or I'm going to do row repairs and maintenance. And I'm going to charge this one to, this is part of GC, and I'm going to say this is 1500 And then on my next line, I'm still going to pick my repairs and maintenance. But let's say for this one, um, I'm going to uh, pick, let's say, my residential company. And this is going to be 1600 Then I'm going to charge this account on my GC. <clears throat> so as you can see, on my locations, I'm crossing companies, all right? I'm doing some on Timberline GC, but I'm also going to my other entity, and I'm going to go ahead and post this. Um, so what I'm going to come in here is I'm going to go and view this. And now this is the journal entry I just posted. So the top section is going to be the journal entry, the 15, the 16, and the 31. And then right below that, you're gonna see um, due to on residential, due to GC, and then on GC, gonna be due from residential. So I didn't have to think about this. The system automatically did that based on the mapping of what I told it to do. So pretty powerful, pretty seamless. Um, that's going to give you that balancing between um, all of the debits and the credits. So I thought that was um, good to show. Um, one thing I just realized I forgot to show when I was in accounts payable, so I'm going to bounce back uh, there as well. I'm going to do this. So within your AP invoices, there's an approval history button. So if I click on that, we have the ability within uh, Sage Intact to set up uh, if you want to set up routing and approval rules. So um, on this particular um, invoice, it's partially approved. Kathy entered it and approved it, but now it's sitting at Emma's. Emma has not approved it yet. So you're gonna get that visibility as to who's sitting on this, you know, whether it's, um, uh, whether it's Emma or somebody else. Emma sh will have this um, email notification if she sets that up to let her know she has information waiting for her approval. She could also set up a dash part uh, listing that as well. So very powerful within the system to have that approval history, whether it's you know based on a department who gets to approve it or a dollar amount or, or different information. You would be able to um, see that, that uh, chain and that history. All right, I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna ask Lauren I know I've been talking for quite a while. Are there any questions that have come in that I can answer? You know, Kathy, magically, I think you answered all of the questions that uh, have come in just as you went through. Uh, you went through the entities and um, the reporting, and uh, no. So I think we've you've covered it all. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Um, one last thing that I had in my notes that I wanted to show is um, there are – for time and expenses, there are um, other, the ISV companies out there that if you wanted to use some other tool and have the information brought in here, uh, you can certainly do that. You also have the ability to uh, create a timesheet in here. Whoops. Um, you also have the ability to come into timesheets 
can enter time as well. So if I come in here to Robert Jones's time, uh, just to show you, the screen is very um, similar to kind of the accounts payable screen. You're gonna have the header information up at the top. And then down in the grid where the time entry is, you know, what job, what cost code, what cost type, and the time for the week. So you could also build your approval process around uh, the timesheet functionality. Uh, once again, if you, if you have a remote tool that you would want to use, uh, we can look into that and, and see the ones that are currently integrated. Uh, but you also have the ability to import the time as well. So a couple different options there depending on uh, your situation. So I wanted to at least give you the visual on that, on the time entry. A um, few more minutes. I also have a favorites button on the left, which is my star. So if you have some areas of the program that you consistently go to and you want a quick shortcut, your favorites, to be able to hop there, uh, that would be something you might want to set up here as a favorite. And then you also have the ability on the right-hand side to bookmark pages as well. So you might have, I know sometimes our clients will use this for um, month-end procedures so that you might have a specific flow here, maybe not even month-end, but it could be some other flow that you want to follow where you want to bookmark pages and you want to hop right to those. So that might be something that you set up as a bookmark. So navigation-wise, you're going to have a couple different ways to uh, navigate around the program, bookmarks, um, favorites, or the dashboards themselves. So different options there. Um, at this time, I have completed everything I had wanted to, um, to cover today. If you have any questions, uh, please reach out to uh, your salesperson or I think, Lauren, you're going to be sending a copy of this recording to everyone here today? You got it. I am. All right. And uh, Steve, did you want to add any last comments? I do. I do. I always have the last word, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. The floor oh, no, just, just kidding. Thanks, Kathy. Nice job. Uh, as you guys could see, you know, just in a short um, window of time here, the product is uh, very robust, very user intuitive, I say, because it, it's really easy to navigate and find your way through. And, and of course, there's different ways of doing uh, things to kind of adopt, adapt to how you want to run your business. Um, I'm going to put a plug in real quick. Uh, Lauren will have to tell me exactly what the date is. I forget, but I believe coming up in August, um, we do have scheduled a, a webcast for uh, – specifically talking about migration. And, and if you're currently a SAGE 300 person and you really want to look at, hey, what's it mean to migrate? How do I, how does this happen? What's it going to look like? Um, we're going to have a, a webcast for that. And, uh, you know, it's going to be very interactive, if you will. I'm really going to talk about what it takes and, and the effort. That's probably one of the things in, in, in my uh, quite a few number of years of doing this kind of work is always a challenge. And it's always something that people struggle with because how much data do you move? When do you move it? What's it look like? And, you know, all that kind of stuff. So we are going to do that in a few, we a few weeks, like in August. I'm going to say sometime in mid-August. Um, and yep, you know, that's correct. You'll, you'll see, yeah, Lauren will be getting some information out for you on that because about half the people who responded to our poll said, hey, we're, we're considering moving to a cloud product in a couple of, within a couple of years. Um, doesn't surprise me that uh, people are thinking about that because you know that that's where the technology is now and it's where it's continuing to head and and the trend and as everybody starts looking at hey it's 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 sometime in the next couple of years you know we got to start this cloud journey and how do we migrate and get there and that's one of our functions in life is to guide you through that process and to kind of go th go through that journey with you um, you know, that's kind of, you know, data conversion and how do you migrate your data uh, is one of the key things. So well, stay tuned and uh, jump on that webcast here next month and we'll we'll get into that a little bit more. So is there any other questions or fo anything from folks? I don't see any more questions, no. Um, but, yeah, I will be making sure to reach out to each one of you with that invitation to the migration webinar in August as well, like Steve talked about. 
Anything else? No. That's it. That's All it. Right. Awesome. Folks, awesome. Thank you for your time today. We do appreciate it. And again, if you something if you think of something in the middle of the night like I do, um, you can uh, send me an email and I'll answer you the next day. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> thanks again. All right. All thanks right. everyone. Thank you. Have a have a great day. Bye bye.